MKM chief economist and market strategist Michael Darda joins the panel. Thanks for coming on the show, Michael. Thanks for having me. So after the great financial crisis, the Fed slashed rates, bought bonds, but even that didn't really spark the growth or inflation that they wanted. So when COVID hit, the Fed kind of doubled down on that approach, and now we have strong growth and way too hot inflation. Was this one of those cases of fighting the last war? I think that's exactly what happened here. Uh, in the wake of the 0709 global financial crisis, we had tremendous pressures from risk aversion in deleveraging. And so the Fed really had to do quantitative easing and keep short term interest rates at very low levels simply to achieve modest growth and low but positive inflation. This time around, we were hit with a different shock, and the Fed was actually much more aggressive and much more open-ended when it responded in early 2020. The problem is the recovery's been much more rapid, inflation's been much higher, and the Fed still is sort of clinging to a reaction function that we saw in the last business cycle, but this one's unfolded much differently, and so they are indeed behind the curve this time. So if they're behind the curve, does that mean that they're going to have to get even more aggressive than the market seems to be pricing in right now? Uh, how, how much interest rate hiking, how much you know, roll off uh, of the balance sheet do you expect? Yeah, I think they they will have to get more aggressive. Um, you know, right now the futures markets are pricing for them to to move at you know pretty much every meeting going forward. Um, you know, we even had markets pricing in 50 basis points right out of the gate. That's reversed to to some degree. But I think where the pricing is going to have to move is probably on the terminal rate. Michael, what do we expect when we look at the stock market over the next year as the Fed goes through this process? Well, you know, I think we're going to see more volatility. Uh, the way that this year started off, unfortunately, could be a prelude for the rest of the year. If we think back to 1994, which was, you know, probably the last time the Fed was moving in a more aggressive fashion, uh, the S&P 500 really didn't do much. I think we had about an 8% fall off and then, you know, the market started to recover, but pretty flat market or down marginally for the year. And so we could see something similar play out if the Fed is um, is forced to be more aggressive. I'm Michael Jack Howe. Uh, I can get a 10-year Treasury right now paying 2%. The latest reading on inflation is 7.5%. I am out of fingers and toes trying to make that math work. What should I do about bonds right now? Yeah, I think uh, the math doesn't really work. And so as we're seeing, um, you know, the 10 year yield has been moving higher. It's still quite low on a historical basis. It's even low relative to the average of the last business cycle that had very low inflation. So we could, you know, have a ways to go on the 10 year here. Typically in rate hiking cycles, the short end is going to come up faster than the long end. But at least in the early innings, the whole rate structure should be levitating higher. Hi, Michael. This is uh, Ben Levison. So uh, you mentioned the word recession. Um, historically, it's Fed tightening that leads to a recession. Is there any way to avoid that this time around? Yeah, I think there is. I think if the Fed is forward looking and I think if the if the Fed reinforces uh, its targets in a credible way. Um, they could certainly, you know, get up to a, a, a neutral rate, maybe slightly above neutral. Um, and if they're sufficiently forward looking, uh, we could have a soft landing, but it's much more difficult if you've fallen behind the curve and then the tightening process uh, is, is speedier. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, it's like a vehicle. If you're traveling at a high rate of speed, it's much easier to to come off the road. So I think it's it's going to be a bigger challenge this time to avoid a recession. There's also a scenario where inflation just remains elevated um, at rates that the Fed feels it's going to need to actually go above neutral to bring inflation down, and you know that means that a recessionary outcome is, you know, is, is much more likely. Yeah, it's, it's tough to thread that needle just right. Uh, Michael Darda, thank you and that beautiful dog for coming on our show. Thanks for having me.